I'm Penny LaFleur. I'm the academic administrator in the Department of Communication, Popular Culture, Film. Uh, my primary job is the advisor. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on um, uh, how our uh, program began, uh, evolution of it, uh, assessment of, uh, of the program itself, and some of the results we have to date. Um, the Internship Service Learning Program course uh, in our department uh, began informally about four years ago in 2011. Uh, at that time, the department was concerned with declining enrollments, uh, inter students entering into the honors year. Uh, we conducted surveys and focus groups with our third year students to determine how many had planned to stay for honors, yet we also asked them what they would like to see in their fourth year of study. Um, the most popular response was to have an internship course or capstone course in order for them to gain applicable skills to enter the work world. They felt they needed to attend a postgrad program because they lacked the skills or lacked confidence in their abilities to enter into their field of interest. When I questioned students who had qualified for honors year yet decided to leave with a three-year pass, some said they felt their money was better spent uh, for one more year of study in a postgrad program. Dale Bradley and I, faculty in uh, CPCF, had submitted a proposal to the department to create an internship course for our fourth year students to be able to earn a credit for job experience. We did at that time offer an internship course for business communication majors only to take in third year, but it was not very popular. I'm not sure how we thought we'd offer this course. We just needed to offer it. We knew that. We, we appro it was approved and submitted to UPC uh, to begin in the 2012-2013 year. Um, just a little bit of background on myself and how I got involved. In my capacity as the advisor, I would meet with new and prospective students uh, who inevitably wanted to know what can I get with this degree, to which I would also always answer anything you like, and then go on to explain that nothing is guaranteed just by getting a degree. They'd also have to gain practical experience in whatever field they were interested in. Uh, when they are near completion of their degree, the question changes from what can I do with this degree, with a lot more stress added to that question. Uh, uh, the department has incorporated options to gain practical experience um, since it began in 1999. Beginning in 2000, they offered co-op pro offered co-op programs for all of our majors, but they did not prove to be very effective. For the first two years of my position as advisor, I noted we'd admit as many as 45 students into the co-op stream each year, but only about one or two actually stayed in the program for the duration of the degree. They dropped out for various reasons, but the reasons were primarily because they did not fully investigate or understand the requirements and cost of the program. I found the students who did stay in it for one to three years were also very anxious about getting into their courses because they were between, between years, and they were even more anxious about getting a job placement. I believe they had to do four, um, three four-month placements within the four or four and a half years in those, those programs, which began at the end of their second year. They were just not prepared to do anything at that time. Therefore, most complained that they did not find their placements very productive or that they had to acquire a placement themselves. Regardless, the department decided to stop offering the program at the end of the 2007-2008 school year because of the lack of students completing it. The following year, 2008-2009, the department incorporated collaborative programs. And to date, we have seven articulation agreements with three different colleges. At present, I believe we have a, as many as 20 students enrolled in the various programs, but that number represents only about 3% of our, our whole majors in any given year. Um, hang on, I skipped one too many pages. In August of 2011, just as we were inventing this uh, new internship course that we didn't know how we were going to run, uh, Savannah, who, who was a student who had just graduated from our program, uh, contacted me to say she had acquired a freelance position with the Niagara region to launch a workforce attraction campaign called This Is My Niagara. She was instructed to hire as many as 13 interns to work with her to focus on branding and marketing Niagara for the next generation. The project was designed as a student-driven initiative that sought to connect younger talent with small and medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs, in Niagara and to provide a strong voice for Niagara's emerging generation. I sent out an email to the students entering the honors year that year, and I received responses from exactly 13 students from all four of our programs. These were the students surveyed the year before. 
At the end of that school year, Savannah sought to have the campaign incorporated within the Faculty of Social Science, Department of Communication, Popular Culture, and Film. Savannah argued that This Is My Niagara was building a greater Niagara awareness at the educational level through a coordinated internship program, interactive digital media platform, and stakeholder events. At that time, the project was supported by uh, the Faculty of Social Science, the Department of uh, Communication, Popular Culture, Film, Niagara Workforce and Planning Board, Next Niagara, St. Catharines Enterprise Center, Small Business Enterprise Center Niagara Falls, and NGen Niagara Interactive Media Generator. Both parties, the Region and FOSS, Faculty of Social Science, enter an agreement that This Is My Niagara would act as communication and marketing lead for connecting students, new and recent, graduates to SMEs and relevant organizations in the Niagara region through a coordinated internship program to be offered by CPCF. The intent of the project was to build greater awareness of Niagara's employment and lifestyle opportunities, introduce area employers to Brock's talented students, and strengthen the university community relationship, engage fourth year honor students in focused learning opportunities with practical application in the workplace. The initiatives would directly engage with community stakeholders and businesses, develop and manage an interactive digital platform for students and community to find information and share their Niagara stories and experience in an effort to showcase successful SMEs and related entrepreneurial activities. Uh, they also want to promote the Niagara region as an attractive locale for recent university graduates to live and work and highlight and re reinforce young adults' positive perceptions for the Niagara region. The region agreed to provide crop cost shared funding towards specific project expenses for up to two years, beginning in September 2012. About midway into the school year, the region pulled the funding and the dean then supported the project until the end of the year. By the end of the school year, in 2013, we decided to continue the internship program with This Is My Niagara, but incorporate more service learning opportunities for our students. We applied for and received a service learning grant and hired a student who had just completed an internship in the winter term. Uh, the student, Desiree, assessed the need for communication, popular culture, and film interns, interns in the nonprofit sector. She researched different categories of nonprofit cultural organizations using social media in the Niagara region and built a database. She then designed and analyzed an online questionnaire to follow up with selected groups where social media use was underdeveloped or below industry standards and could be improved to help organizational goals. She scheduled face-to-face -face meetings with organizations to develop social media project proposals outlining deliverable outcomes for 15 organizations willing to accept interns for the 2013-2014 fall and winter terms. We placed 23 students that year in various organizations gathered on the, the database. Um, six others, five other students were placed with This Is My Niagara, and six other students acquired their own internship placements within small businesses or larger organizations. This latter group of students experienced the most difficulty with meeting their learning objectives and experienced a lot more stress with their placement. They faced financial challenges and difficulty managing additional demands on their time. Uh, Desiree continued as the internship coordinator for the, for the year supervising the interns. Uh, this is my Niagara interns. They planned and hosted two connect, ne two connect networking events, uh, assisted in promotion and attended the Terry O'Malley lunch and lecture series, attended Next Generation Day for Advertising Week in Toronto, assisted in an event set up for 20 Valley Winter Wine Festival in January, created a social media plan, a social media policy. Uh, this is my Niagara website that showcases students, guest speakers, and small to medium sized Niagara area businesses and nonprofit and cultural organizations where the students are interning. They created a blog to talk about events attended and they attended Next Niagara Social to support another similar initiative and networking initiatives with SMEs. The remainder of the interns contributed to This Is My Niagara by providing young talent to local businesses. They also contributed by giving This Is My Niagara interns information on upcoming events and activities within their placement organization. The cross promotions gave the organizations another platform in which to advertise their event and it gave the students an opportunity to showcase the work they were doing for this organization. At the end of the winter term, we applied, and obtain, applied for and obtained another service learning grant and Desiree focused on attracting SMEs during that summer. She also created an online application on our CPCF website that allows nonprofit and SMEs to apply for an intern.
Along with their contact information, we asked applicants to indicate the areas of work they require of an intern, such as social media, video, marketing, event planning, communication, or other. We indicate on the application form that students are required to complete 80 hours of work per semester, and we asked applicants to indicate the project or projects they would like one or more interns to work on. We also asked them to indicate whether they're able to come to campus to meet with the student if transportation is an issue for the student. We have a number of options on campus as well, and we have applications from nonprofits and SMEs that are owned, operated by Brock alumni. By the end of the summer, we had a database of at least 70 placement options. We decided to just present the entire list to the students to choose from. Uh, course objectives include the service learning gives students opportunities to explore their academic fields and professional environments. The internship placement is complemented with reflective writing assignments and professionalization workshops to ensure that upon completion of this course, students are able to think critically about the applica applications of their academic study, apply their theoretical knowledge to practical situations, thrive in a professional environment by applying appropriate skills and knowledge, and practice meaningful reflection and self-assessment to address challenges, set goals, and develop professional identity. Uh, method of instructing individual internship placements involve varying levels and styles of instruction depending on the location and industry. On-site instruction includes bi-weekly professionalization workshops that feature skills training and practice, guest presentations from alumni, rock staff, and faculty, and the community and group discussions and activities that promote reflection and synthesis of experience. For second term, we ask for students' input on guest speakers and group narrative topics. Okay. The weekly journal reflections allow the student to assess their own learning and at the end of the term they write a critical reflection paper and submit a portfolio. Bi-weekly workshops include professional and personal skills development. As the internship facilitator, I read the weekly journals and provide feedback as needed. I feel my role aids in the personal development of the students as I encourage them to assess their assumptions and emotions. The internship coordinator, Amanda Bishop, is responsible for community outreach and professionalization skills. The coordinator becomes the liaison between the placement and the intern. We have gone from 16 interns in the first year of the course to 31 in the second, 34 in the third year, and now we have 50 students in the internship service learning course, which represents about 80% of qualified students, so our fourth year students. Two of the students are not even majors in our program, but, two can, but they can take courses as major designated courses. They're from uh, Faculty of Humanities. Uh, student response to this course is nothing but positive. The option to choose their own placement or from one that we acquire provides the flexibility, that's our middle name, they need. Not all are keen to seek out formal internship programs for various reasons, but primarily for lack of time to devote to them without interrupting their studies. We have, ha we have had one student last year, one this year, that acquired full-time uh, internship placements in summer and then attend the workshops in fall term to gain the credit for the placement. Uh, they submit their journal entries during the summer placement, but final critical reflection papers and portfolio are not due to the end of the term. We like to remain as flexible as possible with the placement options to ensure a stress-free experience for our students. The last two years, the response from students about the journal entries has been the most positive aspect of their placement. Having to reflect on themselves seems to be the best way for them to assess their learning. The group narratives are also highlighted as important aspects of their experience. They report that they like to hear when they are not the only ones struggling or challenged by something. And they also like to share when they or others have overcome a challenge. They report feeling a real connection with their peer groups and across programs that they have not experienced in other courses. They have all indicated in their final evaluations that they would recommend this course to, other, to all students and we're glad they had the opportunity. They report a heightened sense of confidence in themselves and in their future, whatever that may be, as they seem to gain a sense of direction. For these reasons, I feel we have met our objectives for the course and we in turn acknowledge your accomplishments with a certificate that we place in their convocation folders. Um, just a few other things I wanted to add about this year. Um, included for this year, we've uh, uh, incorporated more fundraising and it's mostly to help with our branding. My picture's on. Of this is my Niagara. Um, so we've uh, ordered some knitwear, hats and scarves and mittens that we're going to sell and the students are more interested in actually, uh, anyways, <laughs> um, raising funds for community charities, local community charities. They did at an event last year at one of their Connect events. They had a 50-50 draw and the money that they raised from it, they uh, donated to a food bank, went out and bought the food and donated to food bank. I'm just going to go into more, but anyways, um, that's it. I'll wrap it up. Thank you very much for your time.